So glad to see everybody here tonight. Thank you very much. My name is Christine Seminario. I am the director of the Monmouth County Animal Response Team. And it is a, a branch of the Office of Emergency Management for Monmouth County. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about emergency preparedness for your pets. Uh, towards the end, I'll even go into the cart operations and show you some pictures with that. Um, I also wanted to let you know that everything you will see in the lecture this evening um, is in brochures. So there's nothing in information in the lecture that will not be in the brochures on the table. So you have to write anything down. And also my contact information is there as well. Okay? Um, so, pets. How to prepare for emergencies with our pets and disasters. Um, pets are an integral part of our society. Half of the households in the United States of America have pets. That's a lot. Um, it's very critical that individuals know how to prepare for their pets in a disaster. Sometimes we have warnings and sometimes we don't have a lot of time. So if you prepare your kits ahead of time and know where you're going and have a plan of action, it will make everything go smoothly. First, I'm going to start off. Hello, good evening. I'm going to start off with a little background and a little bit of history. Um, we all know about Floyd, Hurricane Floyd. Now, Hurricane Floyd had the largest loss of animal life in the history of the United States of America. It was three million domestic and farm animals. And this was down all the way down south. And those of you may remember pictures from Floyd, but it was extremely large and a lot of animals. Um, this actually um, gave birth to the very first animal response team, and that was in North Carolina. They are our leaders. Uh, North Carolina was the very first state ever to have a county animal response team or a state animal response team. Um, they are considered our premier um, state animal team. Now, we also have Katrina, which we are all very familiar with. Um, Katrina, even though it wasn't as large or as many animals lost, it was actually very significant because it was the first time that the media played a very large role, especially with animals. Now, having the media issues that we had, this really made um, a lot of legislation happen and a lot of animal rescue groups and national groups really went into overdrive with protecting animals from disasters. Um, you see a statistic up here, and it is true. 60% of people will not leave their home without their pet. And those that are forced out will go back, okay? And because that happens, not only are their lives in jeopardy, they actually put the lives of first responders in jeopardy. For Katrina, the first responders had to rescue a large amount of people specifically because of pet issues. So it's a pretty big thing and it was necessary to make legislation so this doesn't happen again. <clears throat> the Pets Act 2006, it was October 6th, President Bush put into legislation the Pets Evacuation and Transportation Standards Act. This finally made it um, federally regulated. It gave FEMA the power to provide money, funding, rescue, set up, and pay for animal care in disasters. This actually requires each OEM, Office of Emergency Management, each county, each state, to put into their emergency plans animals. This is the first time that any government had to put a plan for animal rescue and animal care into their budget, into their plan, and train people. So this is a very significant legislation that did a lot of good work, and it authorizes the funds to come from FEMA. Um, May 8th, is, every year, is National Animal Disaster Preparedness Day and a lot of OEMs and CARTs, which is County Animal Response Teams, 
um, have some celebrations. They usually have booths um, in different places. And we kind of celebrate what we do as a group. Um, there was two other little pieces, the post-Katrina emergency management reform act and the national response framework that came from this act as well. So basically, from now on, everybody considers animals in part of their emergency plans. And it does also get paid for through federal funding. So let's get into emergency preparedness, which is very important. Um, we're going to talk about being informed, planning, evacuation, and return. And I'm going to take you through step by step. First of all, being informed, um, which is what you started to do this evening by coming here. Um, what you want to know before a disaster strikes is your local alerts. You want to know what the local plans are, you want to know what your local OEMs are, and you want to know where you're going, your contacts, what numbers do I call. For example, um, there's Monmouth County and Ocean County. I put those up there because, you know, it's more likely that a lot of you are from Monmouth County or Ocean County. Um, those are the numbers for the offices of emergency management. That is who you're going to call in a disaster and you're told to evacuate. You're going to call them and ask where the emergency shelters are. If you need a shelter and you're not going to somewhere you've already planned. Um, the radios, the TV stations will tell you. Um, before Hurricane Sandy hit, um, all week prior, you know, we were keeping updates on it. It was on the news all the time. Then we evacuated the South Jersey. So it's not too difficult to keep track of when you need to evacuate. Um, there's even mobile apps that can help with this. So, we have some disasters. Um, natural disasters are kind of obvious. Um, earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, and all that. Um, what you want to know is, um, in order to plan ahead appropriately, you need to have your kids ready, and that's something that we're going to discuss tonight. But knowing where you're going to go, and especially in certain kind of disasters, are going to help you. Now, because we just had Sandy, I just want to let everybody know that um, National Hurricane Preparedness Week is May 26th to June 1st of this year. If you go on to the website for hurricanes, for the National Hurricane Center, they have a wonderful website that can teach you a lot of information about hurricanes. Preparedness, what to do, where to go, is a really great website for hurricane um, information. Hurricane season, by the way, is coming. That is June, July, and August. And uh, Sandy was in November, but generally the hurricane season is in the summertime. Um, we have man-made disasters. Um, those of you have heard in Texas about the explosion from the fertilizer building, correct? Yes. Um, last year we had the train crash, which was chemicals, um, explosions, bombs. Um, we do have man-made issues. Those are disasters as well. It's not just hurricanes. Now, the thing with natural disasters, many times we actually know about them ahead of time. Like hurricanes, we can track them coming. These, we can't. There are disasters that we will not have any notification of. They will just happen to us. This is why it's very important that when you leave this evening, you go home and make your pet emergency kits that I'm going to teach you tonight. It will be ready to go. If you have to evacuate your home in 10 seconds, you will not be able to get the items you need, okay? Or the amount of animals, the amount of children that you have. Um, speaking of the last one is fire, that happens to be um, a very common thing that we see in New Jersey. A lot of farm fires, barn fires. Um, there's a lot, in Monmouth County alone, there's many, many, many farms and livestock. If any of you have a farm, um, please, fireproof your farm and your barns. Keep your hay separate. Don't keep anything in your barn that's combustible, paint, fertilizers, aerosolized cans. Don't smoke anywhere near there, flammable objects, portable heaters. Some of us have heat tape, electrical lamps. You want to make your barn safe and make sure your barn has two exits you want to make sure your barn has a lot of extra halters right at the door. You have to evacuate your animals quickly. Um, and it's a very good idea if you have a fire alarm system that doesn't rely on a just 
um, a smoke detector where the battery can die. If you get the kind like say ADT, where if it goes off, there's actually an alarm in your home. Like say you're sleeping at three o'clock in the morning and there's a fire, you'll know right away. So um, there's a lot of fires in New Jersey with forests and barn fires um, in farms. So, and it's also important for that, that the local emergency knows how to get to your farm. They have the driveway to get up. It's not occluded, you know, not cluttered, and there's a plan to evacuate to someone else, somewhere else. All right, planning ahead. This is extremely important. First of all, figure out your disaster plan. It's your home with your family. You have to know what you're gonna do and where you're gonna go, okay? Well, if we have disaster, this is where we're going. If we are separated, if I'm at work and the kids are at school or we're separated, this is where we're gonna go and this is where we're gonna meet automatically. Say all the cell phone towers don't work anymore. We know where we're gonna meet here. Um, practice. I cannot emphasize enough to everyone about practicing, okay? You can have a plan, but if you don't practice it and you have little children, it, it's not a good thing. If you have children in your home, the more you practice, the more you talk about it and teach it to them, the more they'll remember. Also, with your own pets, the more often times that you take your dog or your cat and put them in the crate, get them out, do an evacuation, practice the evacuation, put them in a crate. The more times you do that and they become comfortable with that situation, God forbid you ever do wind up in a shelter or in a location where they have to be crated, they will know what it is. They'll be familiar with it. Okay? It's great to have a crate for an emergency, but if you ever have to put your animal in a crate and they're not used to it, it's going to be much more stressful. Um, deciding where you're going to go, decide who's going to take your pets if you're not home. Um, you, you know, neighbors, family, friends, that's a good option. Um, but just remember, don't forget to call OEM or your local authorities to know where you need to go if you need a place. Okay, the family kits. Now this is part of our planning ahead. This is not for our pets, this is for our family. I'm sure you've seen this before when the Hurricane Sandy was coming, this was all over the TV. Um, water, and you do want a gallon of water per person per day. Um, the food, non-perishable, can opener, you never know if you're going to have electricity, the battery powered radio, um, flashlights, batteries, first aid kit, um, personal items, clothing, medications, of course your medications, that's very vital. If you're going to pre-pack an emergency pack, you want your medications in it. If you have medications right now at home, take a few of them and put them in bottles and put them in the pack. Um, when you're making your kits, just make sure that you have you rotate. You don't want to leave something in there too long and you know it may affect your bag itself. All right, now the good stuff, the pet kits. This is what you're going to need to go home and make your pet kits tonight. So, so we have all of this stuff here on the table which I'm going to go over with you. Um, very important is identification. That's basic, right? All right. What you want, besides the fact that your pet should have their collar on them with their tags, this is very important. You want a picture of yourself with your pet. That is very, very important. You, in case you get separated in any way, this will help you, okay? Besides having the collar, this will help you. You want a picture of yourself with the pet, you want your information on it, and, and your records. If you have your rabies certificate, your vaccine records, you want that with you as well. Medications, any medications your pets are on, you want to bring them with you. You don't know if the veterinary office will be open where you're located. So medications, very, very important. As far as identification goes, um, there is this thing called the microchip. Um, it's a little tiny chip like the size of a grain of rice goes under your pet's skin, and it's a um, tracker. Um, all veterinary hospitals, all shelters, all rescues, everybody in the state has a microchip scanner. If you're ever separated from your pet, 
your pet will always be scanned because it's statewide protocol and they could just connect you with your pet. Your information, your address, your phone numbers are connected to that, kind of like a low jack for your pet. <laughs> um, I highly suggest that you get one of those. Um, <clears throat> crates. Now, this is a, a carrier. This would be for a cat, okay? The large metal crates, which you're probably all familiar with, are going to be for your dog. Um, for your crates, you want to make sure that you can house your animal and two bowls comfortably, okay? You want to make sure that you won't, they won't knock it over, um, that they can fit comfortably, that they can stand. Um, you don't know how long you'll need it for. Make sure the crate is the correct size and it's large enough, okay? And practice with your pet going inside of it so he's not stressed and he's familiar with the crate. Um, leashes, you definitely want leashes. Um, now, as far as your bowls go, it's suggested that you use non-spill bowls. Okay, you can get them in all sizes, but non-spill bowls tend to save you a lot of work. Um, these are for cats. Now, if you have the ability, the space, there's also disposable bowls. And these are easy because if you're stuck somewhere and you can't wash the bowls, disposable, of course, is easy. Um, other things that you should have in your kit are um, muzzles. Those of you would know if your pet needs that for any reason. Um, we do have an e-collar that um, sometimes people use this for um, in place of a muzzle because it prevents them from biting, but there's not something on their face. Um, coarse blankets or towels, you need that. Um, first aid kit. You definitely need your pet first aid kit. You're going to have a first aid kit for yourself and your family, but you want a pet first aid kit, okay? You're going to have latex gloves. You absolutely need gloves. You don't know what's going to happen. Cut, injury, you just never know. So you need your gloves. You need a lot of gauze. We have gauze rolls. We have gauze pads, tape. We have a roll of medical tape and a roll of vet wrap. Um, cotton balls, some Q-tips. Neosporin, very important because you can wrap up any injuries. Um, eye. Eye saline. You never know when something's going to get in your eye. Um, you want to have that in there. We do have a nail clipper and a comb. We have some eye lube. Um, this stuff you could buy over the counter right in the store. Um, we also have Telfa pads, nail clippers. Just make sure you, if you um, get any of these items, also get the stock quick in case of any kind of injury. Um, if you're out somewhere and your pet sustains an injury, um, that they're limping, fractures, or something going on with a limp. Not all of us carry a split in our bag, but we probably carry a magazine. A lot of emergency rescue uses magazines for splints. You put this around the leg, tape it around with your tape, and it stabilizes the leg until you can immediately go to a veterinary hospital. Um, also, the good thing about the magazines, if you don't need it for that purpose, they're great for um, litter issues, uh, litter pans, or putting them on the floor for your pet to eliminate. Now, as far as food goes, if you pack dry food and you're into this emergency kit, remember the kit's going to be sitting quite a while, hopefully you never need to use it, but you want to pack, freeze dry your food. You want to pack it so it's airtight, vacuum sealed, okay? This is just dry food and it's vacuum sealed. This lasts for a long time. Okay? I still recommend you change it out every six months, go over your packs every six months, but this is how you want to pack dry food, no other way. Do you suggest it be a large amount or individual servings? Individual servings. Once you crack it open, it's open. Okay. You know, if you don't know how long, you just don't know. If, what if it's water issues? If you're dealing with water flooding issues, if you happen to have opened the whole thing, and then you have more water issues, you won't have any dry food. So um, individual packs are great. There's actually two different cups in here, uh, servings in this right here. Um, there's also canned food. If you buy canned food, please buy the flip tops. You do not know if you're, you know, you never know if you forget that can opener. <laughs> so but flip tops are a good thing. Um, the good thing about wet food is that it also helps with hydration just in case you're getting the low on water. This also can help with that issue. But remember, you want one gallon per pet 
per day. Okay? Um, the bad thing about the cans is that they're heavy and they you know, take up room and the, the weight sometimes affects your bag. Um, as far as elimination, you can just pack newspapers. For cats, um, you want to take your litter and it's easier for you if your litter is in smaller bags, okay? Smaller sizes than this instead of, you know, a big huge bag. Um, this helps a lot. Um, there's also these blue wee, wee pads that they sell in stores everywhere. These are great and these are easy for cleanup. Uh, dog, cat, doesn't matter. Um, remember, when you, if anybody owns a cat and you buy um, large amounts of cat food, um, the box. The box is a great litter can for your emergency kit. You just throw it away. Um, there you go with that. Uh, I don't have the gallon of water, but you're also going to need that. Um, <clears throat> handy wipes, flashlight, batteries. Um, another item that you don't see here is for exotics. If you have an exotic, especially in uh, reptile, you have to have your heat lamps. You do not want to be without your heat. Um, if you amphibians, you need, they need a bowl, so water, um, whatever your kind of exotic pet is, you need to account for that. Rabbits, uh, hamsters, guinea pigs, you have to account for what kind of pet you have. Okay. Livestock kits. Um, these are just as important. Um, you definitely need the um, large plastic barrel, okay? You're going to use this for water. Livestock are not like cats and dogs. They need large amounts of water. So what you're going to do is take large, large garbage cans, line them with plastic, 55-gallon plastic, and you're going to fill them with water. Okay? This is especially for sheltering in place. But that is a way to preserve water. Leg wraps, your nylon leaves, of course you need that. You're going to need your wire cutters, anything that has to do with um, uh, your... Um, halters or anything like that. First aid items for your livestock, just like you would your other pets. IDs. Now livestock can get ID'd in many different ways. The ear tag, the leg band, the tattoo, the branding. Just make sure they're identified some way. If you have nothing and you're just, you're just nothing, take a spray paint, take a spray can and just make a mark on them. You want to identify them. Um, medical records would be good if you had that with you. Um, transportation for livestock, that is a big one. There's people who own farms and they do not have transportation. So you have to think about that in advance. Who, do you have a friend um, that you can call? Um, another thing um, that's not on here is a whole sheet of contact numbers. You want OEM on there, the police. You want your uh, racetrack, you want your fairgrounds, you want fire, you want friends, neighbors, anybody who you think has transportation equipment. You want to have their numbers ready to go on a piece of paper and not digging through a phone book, okay? Um, signs, you're going to want to put signs on your farm, people are entering your farm, okay? Help, you know, at livestock, stuff like that. It's um, much more difficult with livestock than it is with the smaller animals. Um, <clears throat> backup generators. I just want to mention the um, generator specifically. Um, for Sandy, it was actually surprising how many people owned farms, horses, and did not have a generator on their property. We all know when the power goes out, they have no water. The well is off. And it was very surprising how many people did not own a generator so their animals could drink. Um, the state fire trucks, local fire trucks, had to truck in water to many people. Now, in Monmouth County, which is quite large, I'm just going to take one town. The town of Colts Neck, just a single town, has 25,000 horses in Colts Neck, one town. So I can't stress enough how important it is to not only have a plan, prep your farm, have your kids ready, all of the stuff on here, but a generator. It was the biggest problem that people who had a farm had. The power was out and there were so many animals that didn't have water. Please go out and buy a generator. And we only have 12,000 people in Colts Right. Lots more horses than people. <laughs> 
Um, the generators, just make sure that you um, keep track of your oil and your gas. You want to put additives in it. You know, start it up a couple of times. You don't want it just to sit for three years. You know. But just please make sure people buy the generator. All right. Now, what do we need to do if we have to shelter in place? Um, first thing is bringing your pets inside. Now, right now I'm talking about small animal. Um, you're going to bring your pets inside and you're going to put the cat in a crate or a carrier. Okay? They tend to be uneasy and nervous. Um, you want a leash on your dog even though they're inside your home. You never know when they're going to go under a bed, under a table, and it's very difficult physically for you to get them out or because they're nervous, you don't know if they'll snap, which they normally don't do. You want the leash on even though they're in the home and do not let them go outside. If you have to, you're just gonna walk them if it's safe for you to go outside. Um, and definitely separate your dogs and cats. Um, newspapers have lots of recycle, you know, newspapers that you recycle for elimination issues. Um, if you can feed the animals moisture canned food, they will need less water. Now, big letters on top, <laughs> on the bottom, sorry. If you have to evacuate, if you're going to leave your home and not shelter in place, do not leave your animals under any circumstances. In Sandy, there were some people who did leave their animals, mostly cats, but um, you definitely do not want to do that. You want to take them with you because a lot of people thought a couple days, and it turned out to be a couple weeks, many weeks. So definitely take them with you. All right, <clears throat> sheltering place with livestock. Um, definitely identify the best place in your farm. No one knows it better than you. Okay, prep your barn. Make sure you get all the combustible stuff out. Make sure you make it very safe. And the water issue. Like I told you, you're going to take. You're going to take lots of garbage cans and pre-fill them with water and put the lids on them just in case your well goes out. But remember, you're all going to go out and buy a generator. <laughs> um, you want to uh, back, up, test gen uh, back up your generators. You want to identify each animal. Um, there is not a lot of um, instruction that you need for sheltering in place with livestock. Um, they have, they'll be inside their paddocks or wherever they'll be and you just have to weather the storm, just make sure their environment is safe as possible, okay? All right. Now, the disaster is over and you wanna go back home, okay? When you go back home, you cannot let your animals outside off a leash for at least a week, especially if there's environmental damage, things have been moved in your yard. The area your yard is going to have wildlife in it that's a big one the wildlife is going to move and run from wherever they are you may walk into your backyard and see a lot of animals in there you know it could be mice it could be rats snakes skunks wherever you don't know what's going to happen okay so they're going to migrate around they're going to migrate probably for a week or so after everything's over um you have down power lines things are moved nails wood um smell. There's going to be a lot of smells that are not familiar to your pets and that might make them very, very nervous. Their behavior will not be normal. So for the week or two coming home, leash walk your pets only if you have to take them outside. Okay? Never leave them unintended. Also, when you are in your home, you want to check for damage, mold. Mold is a big issue. Um, any kind of water damage. Make sure the water that you're drinking from your faucet is safe and clean. Assistance. There is assistance um, besides the carts, besides the OEMs. Um, the Department of Ag of New Jersey is a huge assistance. Um, you can also do the missing pet network. Um, microchipping, of course, which I told you helps a lot. Um, NJHorseInfo.org is a very good um, organization that helps with livestock. Um, Fidofinder.com, LostMyPet.com, um, but there are ways to get assistance. Now, evacuate. Let's say you're going to evacuate and you're not going to shelter in place, okay? Which, if anybody in the government tells you to evacuate, you're going to evacuate, okay? Now, there's three things you're, four options, actually. Number one is family. That's your first option. 
You're going to get all your family with your pets. You're not going to leave your pets behind. And you're going to go to family or friends, to a home. Okay? Your second option would be a pet-friendly hotel. Now, during Sandy, every single hotel that accepted pets quickly, completely filled. Literally, you could not get a room. Okay? So, there's a list on the table of pet-friendly hotels. Make sure you have them with you and make sure you call ahead of time that they accept the pets and that they have a vacancy. So family, friends, a home first, then pet friendly hotels. The and your pet will be less stressed. It's just you and them in the room. Everybody will be more comfortable. Then we have a shelter. And by shelter, I mean the cart shelters. There are a county animal response team in every single county of New Jersey, okay? And we all open a shelter when there's an evacuation, okay? I ran the one from Monmouth County. And residents are allowed to come to the shelter with their pets. The, the residents stay in the resident part and the pets stay in the pet part. But coming into that environment, that is not your first choice. It's loud, it's stressful. There's, there's 50 animals that they've never seen before, in a crate. It is very stressful. A lot of them were fine, but you want that to be your last choice. Okay? Uh, another option, which I don't have on here because I don't recommend it, is a boarding or a vet hospital. Sometimes, if a boarding facility or a veterinary hospital stays open and they're not in, you know, dire danger, um, that is an option for people. I do not recommend it. If it's not safe for people to be somewhere, make, what I'm saying is the government is saying, all right, evacuate, evacuate Monmouth County, evacuate wherever. That means it's not safe for your pet either. You know, say you go up north to mom's house, but you left Fluffy at the boarding facility, but that's the county that flooded. So, I don't recommend it, but that is another option. If you finally have a place to go, and the place you have to go absolutely refuses to take your pet, and you are willing to separate, it's an option. But take them with you. All right, pet friendly hotels. There's some examples. There's a whole list on the um, table right over there for you to take. And now our shelter. So the way the shelters work, Every OEM for every county in New Jersey opens up shelters. Now, for Monmouth County, we will always have two shelters. One will be people only, and for Sandy, it was Monmouth County University. And then the second shelter will allow pets, and that's where I was at the Arthur Brisbane shelter. Okay? And the way it works is that the residents come in, and it's just like a regular shelter. You have to get registered. They come in, we do intake, we register you. The people live in the people shelter part. The cart team takes care of your pet in the pet shelter part. Okay, so, and we keep everybody separated. So there's a cat room, large dog room, small dog room, reptiles. There's, it's, it's all structured. But um, when we're talking about shelter, that's what we're talking about. Now, if you go to a shelter, make sure it takes pets. If you go anywhere near a Red Cross, they do not take pets, end of discussion, okay? Now, in Monmouth County, if any of you live in Monmouth County, you're lucky because we will always have a pet shelter. Um, same for Ocean, same for many, many, many other counties. But if you try to go near Red Cross, you're not going to go in with a pet, okay? Um, the um, SPCA, there's a Monmouth County SPCA, that's a different kind of sheltering. They don't, it's not that you just leave your pet there and then you go somewhere. It's not the same thing. Now, shelter assistance. So this is how it works. The county OEM is the one who says we are going to open up the shelters. We are telling residents that they're going to evacuate so we're going to open up shelters. And they are in charge of CART. That's who activates us. That's the county response team. Now, in charge over OEM is the state. So the New Jersey Department of Agriculture is who founded 
the county animal response teams and the state animal response teams, okay? So the Department of Ag is the head boss when disasters are going on. And they um, have a whole department dedicated for the carts, okay, and for what we do. Um, currently, the state animal response team is, be, is um, currently being created because we didn't have one, um, and I'm on the committee for that as well. So, and they will be able to help the carts even further with funding. Um, there are 33 states in the United States that have carts. And in New Jersey, out of the 21 counties we have, only two or three do not have a cart at all. So that's a good number. Um, it's a um, very rewarding experience to take care of someone's pet and to give them peace of mind that they're being taken care of while they're in that type of situation. Um, the VERT is a little subset of the state animal response team. Um, it's the veterinary emergency response team, and it's um, uh, veterinarians and licensed techs who will travel to each cart during a disaster, offering their help if they need medical help. Um, the New Jersey Animal Emergency Working Group, um, that is an entity in New Jersey, just a group of different ent people who want to help in disasters. They actually do a workshop each year that a lot of CART members go to. So that's a very um, good group that helps out the CARTs all the time. So we have CART, County Animal Response Team. Now our vision is to create a safe haven for pets, um, domestic pets, even livestock. Some CARTs, not all, but a few CARTs have a large animal team within it to deal with the livestock and the horses. Um, mostly though we're talking about domestic pets. Um, we also are very into educating the citizens, which is why I'm having this talk now, too. Um, if there are any churches, schools, firehouses that want this lecture to learn how to prepare, that's what we love. We love to go, we love to lecture about it, and to get everyone prepared. The more people we can get to prepare, the less people that we will need to have to help in the shelters. The more people will be ready for an emergency. Um, so that's one of our biggest goals. Um, we deal with all kinds of groups. So within our cart, there are some of us who are veterinary. There's people who are not just, just lay people. There's people from um, rescue groups. There's, there's, there's different people that make up your cart, and it's a good way to have it so that everybody comes together and shares different opportunities. Um, <clears throat> now, our typical tasks, um, when we open up a cart are to shelter the pets. We do a registration, we take the pet, we house them in crates, we have food, we have water, we have medical supplies, we have medications, we have a vet. We basically are able to take care of your pet while you're there in the shelter. Um, feeding, walking. Um, now, the way most carts work, um, the owners come into the pet shelter area and visit their pets three times a day. They feed their pet, walk their pet, you know, take care of their pet, um, have to spend time with their pet. Um, there's, you know, depending on the size of the shelter, will limit the size of the visiting hours. But um, you still are interacting with your pet, and you're still with your pet. But most of the day, you are in the people's side of the shelter. But that is the typical way a cart works. Um, if there's any severe uh, veterinary care needed, they don't stay with us. They actually go to a veterinary hospital that would be open. Um, I'm going to share some pictures with you. Um, these are the pictures of the actual shelter that I ran in November with Sandy. Um, this happens to be the cat room. There's two views of the cat room. There were 26 cats. Um, as you can see, they're stacked on top of each other. This is a very normal way that shelters have their cat rooms. Um, there is stuff in between the two cages, but um, a lot of times you don't have a lot of room and it is um, the only way you can set up. That is actually the room that I had. It was a small room, so I had no choice anyway. But um, we always make sure that each room has a lot of ventilation, has a room, has a door to go outside. Um, you know, we make sure the cats are very comfortable. There was no upper respiratory, which was great. Um, my shelter was the Arthur Brisbane Shelter and Wall. I was the shelter that was open the longest. 
we were open for four weeks. Um, typically, a cart shelter is only open for seven to ten days, but I think we all know Sandy was not small, so um, the carts were open for a good two weeks, three weeks. Um, but we, in my shelter, actually went for four weeks. Um, the, and that is because the uh, residents in my shelter were from Keensburg and Union Beach, which don't exist anymore. So in literal terms, there was no place for them to go. And because of that, and because everyone took the pet hotels, everyone took anything that was rentable, um, my shelter had to stay open a lot longer to find places. So, but it was a rewarding experience. The um, uh, residents were very grateful. Um, this, the bottom one is the large dog room. Um, we had a lot of dogs in there. You'll see the blankets over them. Um, we always have quiet time, so they're not always looking at each other. And, you know, we want to have a little sleep time at night. Um, we have, on top, we have the small dog room. Now, that's only one little piece you see, but the room was bigger with many other dogs in it. Um, there's a little schnapp in the middle. <laughs> um, so they are housed in there. They still get their visits. They get fed and supplies and we have veterinary care. Um, you know, it's a very hard, devastating thing for the residents. But because we have this, it's somewhere for them to go. And they actually turn out to be very grateful for you to take care of the pet. So it was a very rewarding experience. Do you want people to bring crates if they have them? Yes. Yes, that is, we promote that. We promote that they bring their own crate. The animal's used to it, the smell, the size, you know, it helps us as well. Um, when we set up the shelter, we actually pre-set up many crates. Just, you, you don't know if someone's coming without a crate. So we actually pre-set them up, especially the cats. Typically, most people have a carrier, and it's actually usually smaller than this. So the cat room, we completely set up the crates in the way that you saw it. So, um, and this is why we do it. Um, this is why the members of our cart are so dedicated. Um, the human-animal bond is very important. And um, the gratefulness that the residents have, it was a very rewarding experience. So if anybody wants to join their county cart, I suggest that you get in contact with your OEM or your cart. Um, you, they usually have websites, and you can um, always join or donate or anything that you wish. Um, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? You, uh, at the beginning of this presentation, there was a hurricane website. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that was? I didn't. I Absolutely, I do. She was asking about the hurricane website. It's just the um, National Hurricane Center. But I'll put it back up for you. Oh, there you go. Hurricanes.gov. Um, it's on FEMA, you know, ready.gov. But if you just Google um, National Hurricane um, Center, um, it'll come up, or the National Hurricane Preparedness Week, it'll come right to that website. But it's a really good website. It's very informative when it comes to hurricanes. Yes? If your area is evacuated and you're not home, that act that you talked about that was um, enacted in, I guess, 2006, does that provide any rights to enable you to be able to go back in and get no. your animals? No, it doesn't. Uh, did you want them to have the mic for the questions? Yeah, I think so. Okay. This is not going to amplify your voices. It's just going to go directly into the mic. Okay. So I guess the next, next question. Okay, next question. Next question. So the question was, if you're not home when your neighborhood gets evacuated, does, did the act give you rights to go into your home to get your pet? The answer is no. The, right, the act gave the county, the government, the, uh, the authority for funding for animal rescue because it never happened before. Now they could put it in their budget. And it also requires your OEM to make animal rescue as part of their plan does not allow you to go back in. Um, as a matter of fact, they wouldn't care for that because if something happens to you, now you have first responders going back in. It depended on the situation. Um, you would probably have that situation if it was 
something that just happened suddenly, like the, an explosion or something like that. Um, it, you know, you don't know if your area is actually cut off by, you know, first responders or not. You would just have to see what the situation is. So, but that's why you should have your plan with the neighbors. Do you have any suggestions with fish tank? I had a 15 gallon tank. I had no heat, I had no pump. The tank went sour, I lost a fish a day. Oh. Towards the end of it. Yep. Is there anything that I could have, because I, I stayed at home, I didn't need to evacuate, and there was just nothing I could do. I mean, I wrapped the blanket around it, I right. tried doing everything I could. I did find um, uh, battery operated bubblers, but that doesn't help heaters or anything like right. that. What? There's a couple of options you have. Um, one of them, which I strongly suggest, because I have one, is a generator. Literally, Lowe's, Home Depot, to buy your home a generator. I'm in an apartment. Uh, okay, that's harder. There are, uh, do you have a balcony? Okay. Um, you can Google different ways to, um, different kinds of generators for indoor use, although it's difficult um, because they usually take gas, because that's the point, there's no electricity. Um, but yes, there are other things. For heat sources, like with reptiles, we use the thermal packs. You know, you can go to Walgreens and buy, like for your back, those, the stone thermal packs. Those are great for heat. What you would want to do, if it's possible, take your fish with the water from the tank and put it in smaller plastic Ziploc bags, okay? And you're going to have to prop them up so they don't fall over and put the thermal bags under the bag. So you're going to have your heat, and they're in there, you got to leave the top open for some oxygen. But as far as the bubbler goes, that's hard. If you have no electricity, you have no generator, there's not a lot you can do with that. So, um, but if there are a few sites that you can Google for emergency care with fish, so I suggest those. Anybody else? Go ahead. If you have a disaster or a hurricane and it comes on suddenly, just like Sandy did. How do you know where to find the shelter? Your OEM, your Office of Emergency Management. All the counties in New Jersey have an OEM, and they all are in charge of the shelters. So no matter what county you live in, you call your county OEM and say, where are the shelters? And they tell you. Or they often have websites where they'll list it as well. Monmouth County, you could do that. Or you, so you can call, look it on the website, either way. Or you can also call your county animal response team and ask them where it is. Do they actually answer the phone during that time? I mean, because. Yes. Are you talking about OEM? Yes. Oh, yes. Someone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They answer the phone. And the cards will answer our phones. We'll probably list a cell phone, like my cell phone is listed in the brochure, but yeah, we will answer the phone. So, but your OEM is in charge of the shelter, so they know where they are. Now, if you can't get a hold of anybody, you can just call the police and say, where is OEM setting up the human shelter? And they should be able to tell you that. Do yes. you have a phone number for the Monmouth County OEM, like that we could write down? Absolutely, we do. Right there. Monmouth County, 732-431-7400, and that's on the cart brochure. Um, Ocean County is there as well. Um, radio stations and TV stations usually do that too. Um, Sandy, um, it was kind of quick, but we had days, we, we had time. We were tracking it for a week. We kept tracking and tracking and tracking. It was not one that just came upon us. So there was definitely enough time to know to get out. Um, and um, call your OEM. Is it WOBM? Is that the Brookdale station? Excuse me? Is WOBM the Brookdale station? I think it might be, because the Brookdale station is one of the radio stations. And they were a lot of help during that. That, yeah. that, yeah. that, that yeah. advertised yeah. that. Yep. Any other questions? So, as yes, go ahead. If you have a lot of animals, what do you put the stuff in when you make the kit? And like double bags, double bags, double bags. 
Yep, just like you would for you. Any kind of, it doesn't have to be a duffel bag, it could just be a big bag with handles, a sturdy bag. Um, depending on how many animals you have, I would just say, say you have a lot, I would make a big duffel bag for cats, and one for dogs, you know, small one for a rabbit, um, you know, separated out by species. Um, the more animals you have, the more you need to plan. The, absolutely, you're gonna need the kit put together already. You will never be able to grab that stuff in a short amount of time. Um, you know, and if there ever comes in the future another hurricane that's very severe, um, I suggest that you don't try to shelter in place, that you find another way, you know, friend, family, friends, somewhere out of the area, because um, that would be your best bet. Pet friendly hotels, you know, but if you have to come to a shelter, just know that we will, you will be taken care of and your pets will be taken care of. Any other questions? What happens to, um, I know a lot of people who still aren't able to go back to their home. Mm -hmm. So this was great for temporary shelter, but then what has happened? Is there somewhere that they can't take animals still? Um, while you're in the shelter, the residents will be finding where to go for themselves. So they'll be on the phone with their family, their friends, neighbors, you know, acquaintances. Um, they will be going down the list of pet friendly hotels, I can tell you that for sure. Um, and then they'll be going to uh, pet friendly rentals. Now a lot of people whose homes were completely destroyed, um, they have to basically look for a new place to live. So pet friendly rentals. Um, in my shelter, because it was such a severe issue and how long we were there, um, towards the end, FEMA actually came in with a special team and literally searched for places who were open and available for housing for these people. For pet people. The people, with, you know, with pets, right. So that they could take the pets with them. Correct, yes. I mean, I think these people. <laughs> right, the idea of the cart shelter is supposed to be temporary. You know, seven, ten days, you know, it's supposed to be temporary. It just didn't happen in this particular case, you know, but we always do what's in the best interest of the pet. Yes? If you have a whole house generator, then is there a need to leave? I mean, can't you just stay there with your animal? That depends on the actual storm, and it depends on your government. So, um, for instance, say, you know, Sandy, um, in Monmouth County. They were evacuating people to the point where the police were ripping them out of their homes. Um, if you remember in um, Irene, the South Jersey, do you remember they were forced to evacuate? And they went home to home to make sure no human being was in it. So even if you have a generator, um, it kind of doesn't make sense for you to stay in a building that might just get crushed or full of water or flooded or damaged and no one else is around. <laughs> so um, if the government is at a point where it's like, no, really, you are leaving, then you need to go for your safety. Wasn't it mostly near the water, though, where people had to leave? For Sandy? Um, yeah, Monmouth County and Ocean County, it was mostly, you know, the closer to the ocean was the worst. I know. Yes. I know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I live in central New Jersey. We didn't really get much or anything, so that was great. but. You know, yeah, for Sandy, the coastal water was worse. But you had more power outage than anything else. Yes, power, power was a big issue with Sandy, so that was difficult, which is why everybody should have a generator. Any other questions? Yes? In the end, were all the animals claimed by their owners then? Oh, yes. This is, the shelter is for owners, for residents. Um, it's not a place for found or stray. Well, I, I guess because it, I, I'm from Ocean County, someone who helped at the shelter in yep. Ocean County. And I know she had said, I guess, some of the animals were not taken Abandoned? Yeah. So that's what I was just curious. Yes. Um, not in mine, but in Ocean, they had a separate situation. Ocean had 200 animals. Um, and it was very large. It was very chaotic. And mostly everybody was great. But there were a couple of people who left. They left their pet. Oh my God. So they left what? They left their pet. They did not 
somehow they walked out of the shelter. I mean, it was it was a lot of chaos with the Ocean County, but you know they walked out of the shelter and left their pet there. Yes. I have a question about that. Since everyone has to register, can they yeah. be charged with animal abandonment? Um, no, it depends on what the circumstance. It depends on first of all they have to find them, which shouldn't be hard because when you intake and you register, you have their number, their license, their address. Um, there was two counties, Ocean was one of them, that when people came to the shelter, literally 80 people ran through the door at the same time. It, they couldn't fill out the intake form fast enough. So there was some information that got lost in translation. So, you know, some people may not answer their cell phone again. If their house is gone, there's no more address, they may not answer the cell phone again. You know, it wasn't a lot of animals, but, you know, it could happen. So, and, you know, there's different organizations that will take care of the pets. Yes? How do you verify that these uh, pet owners showing up at the shelter with your own pets? You, you, you just take their word for it. Really just it. Yeah. You don't want to be there. If you, I mean, it's not something like you want to go to because hey, I'm going there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's you know, if you're going to a shelter, because you have to be there. Yeah. So I mean, you just have to take your word for it. And you can tell too. I mean, you know, you know, if they know the information, the vaccine history, and stuff like that. So. Any questions? Nope. All right. Very important. Practice. Figure out what you're going to do, practice it, and make your kits. I promise you, if something happens quickly, you will not have time to gather all of your stuff. Don't ever leave your pet. Try your best to go somewhere away, family, friends. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.